What up, G5?
Cannon. Awesome. Doing amazing. Come on, what a privilege it is to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. It's so good to see you. We can kind of see you. Um, but you look good this morning. Um, we're just so blessed and honored that you joined us on a Sunday morning. Um, you chose to be here. You got up this morning. You showed up. And there's power in that. So just congratulations for showing up this morning, for coming to church, for pushing through whatever you pushed through this morning. We're just so honored you're here. Welcome to G5. I'm going to have Mama G come up. Everybody say, what up, Mama G? What up, Mama G? Everybody say, what up, Bree? What up, Bree? What up, what up? We are so honored. We want to say welcome home. Um, you can belong before you know how to behave and praise the Lord for that one. So faithful, so good. But we do want to say welcome home. We want to say um, welcome home to our online and our family rooms. Yeah. What up? We love you yes. so much. Shout out Ohio and Salt Lake and yes. Dallas. Salt Lake. Can I just say something too? You know, I love all my Salt Lakeians. Is that what you call them? They were complaining, some of them, I love you, you know who you are, about the heat in Florida. And I looked at your weather and you have 102 today. 100 and what? 102 today. So I'm, we're blessed. <laughs> that's right, we're blessed. We're complaining at 95. So, you know, and then they tell me it's dry heat. I don't care, it's heat. That's the way <laughs> I look at it. But welcome, we're so glad you're here. And we are a loving church. Uh, I had someone new come up to me after the, they were here for their second service, they were here a couple weeks ago and they said, I will tell you one thing, you got down at this church. That is hugging and loving people. They said, I, I have never been touched by so many people. We're like, yay, that's what it's working. Um, I don't know if you know it or not, but we have a servant leader team here that we would love for you to be a part of if you're not. Yes. And one of the values of G5 is that everyone at least gets five touches. We've now made it 15. So it's five from the car to here. It's five while you eat and it's five before you leave. So 15 touches. If you haven't had 15, come and talk to me. We'll work on that. But we're a loving church and we have a, a love language, two of them. We do. We have a love language of physical touch. Physical touch. And we have a love language of words, words of, of affirmation. affirmation. And right. so we also so you have matter. Yes, yes, you do matter. But there's a couple ways you can do it. You can do a G5 fist bump. You can do a G5 side hug. You can do a G5 toe touch. You can do a G5 knee bump. Man, she's going fast. G5 hip bump. <laughs> we didn't give you much time there. And yes. Well, if you're married, you can yeah, you can kiss your wife or your That's husband. Right. But you're my mama, so I love you. Oh, yeah. Um, kiss your mama. But we would love for you to greet at least five people. Tell them they matter. Tell them it's so good to see them. Tell them they look good today. We love you so much. Go and greet people. down for a moment just a moment we just give you a moment of a release on your legs <laughs> restoration yeah that's right um but y'all we just got some g5 news and then we're going to continue with worship and then pt is going to come give us a message who's excited for that come on y'all can i just say this how many of you have been loving james Maybe you haven't been loving it because James is very, very, very convicting. And um, I just hope to tell you this, that you better start loving it because we ain't leaving it for a little while. 
So James is so good, and um, we're just very blessed with the um, just the lead the leadership we've been having with that, and how PT has been um, translating that to us. So we're so excited. But we've got some G5 news, y'all. We're in June, which is crazy. Halfway to Christmas. Holy moly. Holy moly. But we are so excited because this coming week is Triple Header Week. We got Triple Header Week. What that means is there's three major events that happen right in the whole week. And it's actually, it's a power week and it's beautiful. It's a really beautiful launch, a beautiful place, a beautiful time for you to come and get um, just completely completely changed really and so the first event of our triple header week is we got Yana everybody say yeah 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 so um, we got Yana that is gonna be Friday the 18th at 7 p.m. right here we are so excited about this we are um, we have been on the journey of reading deeper into James as um, a community a community of young adults and so I believe we're on chapter four of James, which is gonna be so good. But we just ask this, that you guys bring a change of clothes, bring, wear shorts and a t-shirt, and then bring a change of clothes, because we got some fun things planned for you and I, and you don't want to miss it. And so I encourage you, bring a friend, don't come alone, just tell them, bring a change of clothes, it's gonna be great. There's gonna be a bunch of surprises, it's gonna be really fun. And um, we're gonna dive into the word, which is the best part about it, and we're gonna hang out with a purpose. Um, there's intention with our work, with our hanging out. So come, um, if you're, what did I put on there? 16 to 20. Um, but honestly, we've had um, like 13 into 30s coming because it's hard to say no because we just want people to be in this environment and hanging out. And so come, um, we won't turn you away. We want you to come and be a part of this. So um, mark that on your calendars. This coming Friday is going to be so good. And then Mama G, what is the next event of Triple Header? So Saturday night on the 19th, is that right? It's going to be G5 Women. Yes. So if I can just say this, I like to, I, I even told Bree, I said, I like to call this a conversation. We're just going to have a conversation. I'm not up teaching. I'm up having a conversation with ladies. And this Saturday, the conversation topic is titled, Not That Limb, God. So you'll figure that out when I start talking about it. Not that limb, God. So if you, I really encourage you to come. We get to st sit around as ladies. I think it's important that we get community. It's a big deal to women that we get community and then we get to come in and have a conversation and grow together and then we get to go out and just eat a little bit. It's funny, for the men, we get all these massive sandwiches and tons of food and the women, we have like these little grapes and things and the women are like, oh, I shouldn't, but okay, I'll take two. And then when I feed the men for G5 men, it's like, oh my word, they went through the whole refrigerator. There's nothing left. It's funny how different it is, but we love it. We're excited. I really encourage you to bring someone. If you have a neighbor or someone that you've been trying desperately to get to church, tell them to come and hang out with the women and we're just going to have a conversation and let them come with you. So it's a great opener. Yeah, so that's for in person and then online is going to be, um, personally streamed on a private YouTube link the next Saturday. So if you have people who don't uh, live here and can't come, you can register on g5church.com for the online um, G5 women and it will be personally um, right to them, not um, the 19th, but the Saturday after that, which is so cool. So make sure they do that and sign up for that. And then after that, the last event of G5 Triple Header Week is G5 Men! Where we at? There we go, there we go, there we go. We got G5 men, and this is gonna be a powerful night with PT. 30 to 40 minutes, you don't wanna miss this. 9 p.m., a Zoom call, you can register on g5church.com or on the G5 app. And um, you guys do not wanna come alone to this. Um, I think, well, actually, I don't know what you're speaking on this one. It's okay. It's gonna be good either way, just letting you know. But um, you just, you just don't want to leave a man behind. And so I just encourage you to try to get as many people on that call. And um, it only takes one time for them to experience it. And so maybe if they're struggling to get on there, just press a little harder, get them on there, because they just have to experience it for themselves. 
and they'll want to come back and keep coming back. And so I encourage you, invite, invite, invite. It's going to be so good um, and so great. And um, sorry, guys, I'm the DJ this morning. Our song just about started. That was really good. Um, so over here, hey, guys, I run the keyboard. It's great keyboard brie over here but um yeah i think maybe that was it telling me to stop talking but um, um we're going to um oh my goodness we do have date night which one is date, so sorry. Yes. one more thing i'm so sorry that's okay Go we ahead. do have date night and date night is going to be june 28th now before and this is for every anybody in relationship we say this all the time people wait till they get married and then they go Ooh, I think we need to go to some kind of conference. I don't know what I was thinking. And then they, they look at each other and go, is that truly what I walked down the aisle with? Because remember, when we walk down the aisle, we bring baggage. I don't care who you are. You're bringing that big old honking bag down there. So what we say is to get it ahead of time. Get, your, get knowledge and get wisdom and get understanding ahead of time. So we encourage singles. We have a lot of our single servant leaders that get on the Zoom call. And this is not a beat up session. You will honestly swear that we videoed in your house because we're gonna tell our stuff and then you're gonna go, they're just like we are. It's crazy. So we just wanna grow together, grow relationships. How many of you know relationships is everything, right? It is and anything you do. So make sure you tune in for that. We're gonna have a lot of fun. We even have special date night cups like that we're on the Tonight Show or something, which is better than the Tonight Show for sure. <laughs> But it says date night on the cup, so it's pretty cool. Amen, amen, yeah. amen. We're going to continue with our worship. PT is going to come up and um, pray for us um, over offering. So, yeah. You look good this morning, Thank PT. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's go. It's my girl right there. Anyhow, we are so honored you're here. Thanks for joining us online and all of our family rooms. Oh, my goodness. So now is one of the most exciting times in our lives. Do you know why? We get the chance to give. We get the chance to sow. We get the chance to, to plant. We get the chance to invest. Somebody say invest. How many of you want to return on your investment? So God has promised if you give, I'll give back to you. And so we're not trying to manipulate you. We're not even trying to sell you. What we really do want is for you to get in the game and experience the goodness of God and to understand that God owns it all. I used to tell God, I know you own all. I know you own the cattle on a thousand hills. Have you ever heard that? I said, Lord, if you'd sell a couple of them, I'd appreciate it right now. I, I need that. So maybe today you're going to sow, and as you sow, you're going to go, God, I'm going to plant. And uh, we have so much going on here. Uh, I, I know you know we, knew, we need bathrooms and we're working on that. We need an area for the children. This thing is growing so fast. We want to take care of your kids like you cannot imagine. By the way, we promise we're going to give your children a 30-year jump if they get a part of our children's program here. Is that all right? Is that all right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, we're feeding people. We just sent a bunch of food to Honduras. We're feeding people locally. We're helping families that are in need financially. You have no idea what you are doing. And I just want to applaud you. Your generosity, your obedience to God is off the charts. So I just say all in, let's do it. Can we do it? Our, we have ways to give. They're on the screen online. We're online. Did you know that? G5church.com. I've been waiting. I've, been, I've wanted to say that for years. And so I finally get to say it now. Isn't that awesome? We have a mobile. You can even text it. All you Texers out there, how many of you sent a text in the last week? Can I just see your hands? If you sent a text, send your hand. Why are y'all not raising your hands? I'm not, I'm not gonna come take an offering from you or anything, uh, but you can text to 77977, and uh, we even take cash and checks in the drop, bone, drop, drop zone back there, make the checks out to G5 Church, and uh, we have an app. It's our favorite way to give. You just download it in your smartphone, and when you go to give, you just hit that little button and go. <laughs> That's awesome. So you brand new people are going, these people are crazy. And you're right. We really are. We're the kind of crazy people that if our friend is sick, we'll rip the roof off of a house to get our friend well in Jesus' name. Can I get an amen? And so uh, we are crazy. We are crazy. So let me pray, and then we're going to continue to worship. 
Lord, we love you. You are the giver of all great things. Every good and every perfect gift comes from you. We acknowledge it. Not only our finances, but our health, our strength, our passion, our vision, our shape. God, it all comes from you. And so today I just pray as people sow, as they invest, as they give, as they share, as they honor, as they obey, I thank you, Lord, that you promised in your word to bless them and return it. I'm asking you, Lord, for a hundredfold return on every investment. God, we give you glory and honor and praise and thank you for all your provision and for your giving in the hearts of these people today. If you agree with me, say amen. Amen. Stand to your feet. Let's continue to worship.
see you look at your neighbor and say wow that was a little weak look at your other neighbor and say wow 
Now you're trying to figure out what wow means, aren't you? It's either wow, that's really good, or wow, that's really good. You know what I mean? It's good. Well, I hope you have some paper with you today or a smartphone. I want to chat with you for uh, just a, a couple of seconds this morning. It's so good to have you here. I know I've already told you that, but I want to tell you it again. We are so honored that you're here. If you're brand new, welcome home. This is the place you can belong before you know how to behave. Uh, I do want to challenge. Can I challenge young adults? Yeah. Can I challenge you? Can I challenge you? Can I challenge you young adults? Are you with me? I'm going to challenge you right now to bring at, one, at least one new person with you Thursday night. Can you do it? <laughs> All the people that are over 30 just said yes. <laughs> I, need, I need some under there trying to get one more, okay? Yeah. Friday. It's Friday. Excuse me. I'm their leader. Which way did they go, you know? Anyhow, it's Friday night, so it's going to be awesome. And uh, I just want you to feel the feeling of what it feels like to see your life impacting another life. I want to tell you right now, people are more open than they've ever been to spiritual things. They're open. And the number one reason that people come to church is because somebody invited them. I believe in social media. We're into it. We, we're going to be better at it. We're getting better at it. And, uh, but can I tell you, there's just something about you inviting your neighbor that just is so incredible. So I want to encourage you to do that. Saturday night is ladies' night. It's ladies' night. Anyhow, I slipped back into my uh, flesh very easily. But um, I want to challenge men to take care of the babies, to uh, tell your wife, honey, please go. Tell your girlfriend, please go. Okay? If you're a single man or a man that is free that night, uh, I will meet with a few men over in the green room and we will do a leadership talk that will be a lot of fun. Not to be confused with Monday night, I'll meet you at 9 o'clock on Zoom and we're going to have a blast. But I just want to encourage you to do that. Um, can I tell you, uh, I don't think you have any idea of the stress and the strain and the load that women are carrying. And so I just want us to lift it off of them so that they can uh, come and, and be a part. And uh, I know that strikes terror in some of you men's heart. When we were, when my kids were younger and I would tell my wife, hey, I got the kids, I'd be like, oh God, help me Jesus. Because I, I, I mean, I, I was just like, uh, anyhow, I was overwhelmed. But I just want to encourage you to be a part of that. Uh, a while back, a Christian organization did a survey of people. And in that survey, they, uh, they asked them what they felt like that the church was most noted for. When you think about the church, what do you think about them? What do you think about Christians? And amazingly, it came back. You would think it would have come back that they're kind or they're humble or they're loving or they're generosity or they have integrity or they give honor. But the number one thing that came back was people said that Christians that they knew were judgmental. They were judgmental. They're judgmental. Now, I'm ashamed to admit it, but when I was a boy growing up, I was raised in a church where they literally taught us to be judgmental. They taught us to read the Bible so we could judge other people. They taught us to read the Bible so I could find fault with somebody else. And I just want you to know, G5 stance on this is that as this church, we are going to be a church that is loving and kind and building people. We're going to leave the judgment to God. And we're going to love and invite and care for people that are hurting, that are broken, that are bruised. Can I get an amen in here? Can I get an amen? Can, will you join me on that? I want you to know that tells me that as the body of Christ, we are not doing a very good job at representing Jesus in this world. We're not doing a good job. Everybody in this room probably at some point in your life has heard 
probably the most famous Bible verse, and it's John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him would not perish but have everlasting life. But it's sad because most of the church stops there. They don't read 17. And here's what I want you to hear today because in 17, 317, he said, I did not come. This is Jesus. I did not come to the world to judge the world or condemn the world. I came to save it. Amen. I came to save it. Can I just punch pause for a second? Will you, will you punch pause with me for a second? Just punch, just punch it right there in your brain, all right? Can I tell you, why is it that we as the church think people that don't know Jesus are supposed to act like us? The Bible says in Romans that if you don't know Jesus, your mind has not even been transformed by the power of God to even think the way he thinks. Matter of fact, you're blinded to the truth. That's why so many of us are preaching on clothesline issues and God is going, no, no, if they fall in love with me, their behavior will radically change. Can I get an amen in here? So we've got to grow in the grace of God. That's why I'm asking you, will you give me one year of your life, just one year of your life and be consistent. I'm begging you, be consistent for one year because here's what's going to happen. Right now we have a sense, we know the truth that right now God has called us us to equip the saints to do the work of the ministry and to prepare them for their eternal assignment. This is not all there is. Do you know that? This is really a short vapor. These flowers are so beautiful out here. And, and uh, believe it or not, uh, during the week, uh, I don't really ever take a day off. I probably should. My wife would probably like me to. But, but can I tell you, every now and then I'll come out here and uh, we got Amy and she's helping with these flowers. But every now and then I just grab a bucket and I just water the flowers. Now you say, Tim, why do you do that? Well, number one, it's therapy for me. But it also reminds me of how I am called by God to be a refresher and a repunisher and be a fresh glass of water to the world around me that's in need. And not only people, but the beauty that he's given us. But I'm amazed at how short-lived these flowers are. They're beautiful and they fade. It's like a vapor. So I want you to know in your life today that you may think you have a really long time. And I said this two weeks ago, but I'm gonna say it again. The difference between money and time is money you know how much you have left. Time you do not know how much you have left. That's why the Bible says, redeem the time. Redeem the time. This is so important for us right now that I wanna encourage you to come on Tuesday nights because I'm getting ready to start a series that if you've ever struggled in your life, if what is my purpose? What is the meaning of my life? What was I wired for? Why did God put me on this earth? I want you to come on Tuesday night. I started it last night with our leadership team in this room. God fell, it was powerful. Go ask them, it's amazing. And we just did an introduction last night. But when you begin to open up and understand that God created you in your mother's womb, you were formed by God. You're not an uh-oh, you're not a mistake, you're not a oh, what is that? No, you were designed by God. There may be illegitimate parents, but there are no illegitimate children. And so I just want you to know, you were formed by God Almighty. Do you hear me right now? Because some of you feel like you're worthless and you act like it, and you behave like it, and you make decisions on it, and you don't even come to God because you don't feel worthy. And I want you to know that Jesus Christ, when he gave his life on the cross, he knew no sin, he became sin, so that you could become the righteousness of God. And so today, you stand worthy before God because of his son, Jesus. Matter of fact, when you walk into his presence, he can no longer see any sin in your life. All he sees is the blood of Jesus applied to your life. Ladies and gentlemen, that automated us run around this 62-acre ranch. 
just screaming like crazy people. Thank you, Jesus. Do you know why the number one reason hospital beds are filled is because of guilt? And doctors will tell you if they could free the guilt in this world, the hospital beds would empty out. So if you're serious about becoming like Jesus, are you serious about becoming like Jesus? I love it. Then your life's mission should be the same as his. They were eating one day and they came to Jesus and said, are you hungry? And he said, no, I have food that you know not of. Now, if I would have been there, I would have went, so did you slip off to Wendy's? What did you do, Jesus? Did you go down to, did you go down to Chick-fil-A when I wasn't around and didn't let me know? I have food that you know not of. And then he answers them and says, my food is to the will of my Father. Can I ask you, is your life so filled up that what you're doing is actually filling you or is it emptying you? I found out in life people are not exhausted because of hard work. They're exhausted because of meaningless work. Meaningless work. In James 2.13, James, we're in James. My daughter told you we're in James. And James is like really, really, uh, he is amazing. Five chapters, he's a half-brother of Jesus. I don't know what he does, man. He, he, he is so amazing, and he just comes out with these moments of just incredible wisdom and truth and guidance and adjustment. Can you say adjustment? Adjustments. And we in our modern society don't like adjustments because we like to think we're okay. And uh, here he comes right now. Are you ready? James 2.13. James, why do you got to be so mean? And here's what he says. You must show mercy to others or God won't show mercy to you. When he judges you one day, but the person who shows mercy will stand without fear at the judgment and on the judgment day. Mercy triumphs over judgment. Do you see that? Mercy triumphs over judgment. Now, I told you I was raised to be a judgmental dude. And I soon found out the reason I was so judgmental was because I had a pride issue. Can I just talk openly? I even had spiritual pride because I thought I was better than other people because I had all the truth. Because they taught me that I had all the truth. And then one day I realized I didn't have all the truth. I realized that truth is not only the word of God, but it is the person of God. It is the person of Jesus Christ. Jesus is the living word. The Bible is the written word. And in John 6, 63, the Bible says that the words that Jesus spake were spirit and they were life. That's why when you begin to speak the word of God in in your life and over your life and you obey the word of God, it produces greater life and abundance in your life. Are you okay? You still tracking with me? And so today I want to tell you that mercy is not just a feeling. It produces a feeling. If you've ever had, I agree with you, sweetheart. Can I tell you, if you've ever had mercy given to you, you know what mercy feels like. One day I was going down the interstate and I have a, it's, it, don't judge me now, okay? Don't judge me, give me mercy. But I have a heavy foot. And sometimes I start listening and I start listening to music and all of a sudden I'll look down and instead of going to 55, sometimes I'll be going like, 65. James, don't, don't, James, don't be mean like that. Don't be mean like, no, I've even passed policemen doing 100 miles an hour. And so it's amazing when they turn their lights on. I'm like, what are you doing? I mean, why am I surprised they're pulling me over for that? I mean, like, don't you have anything better to do? There are robbers, Robin. Did you ever go through this? Or is it just me? Oh, yeah, me today. Innocent Pastor Goad out here doing what I do for Jesus. And look at you. You could be catching somebody doing a jug deal right now, but look at you. Isn't it amazing to look at everybody else and judge them? Then I don't have to put the mirror on me. And James says, if I do that, I'm deceived. Is it okay? You new people aren't coming back, are you? Bless your heart. I'm so sorry. So every now and then, every now and then, it's like my wife's with me. And, and, and how many of you know when I'm getting pulled over, she goes, I told you. How many of you got any I told you people in your life? I told you. 
I told you you shouldn't have ate that. I told you you should have slowed down. I told you, I told you. I'm like, I don't need that right now. I don't need that right now. And the policeman comes up and goes, sir, can I see your license? Huh. I'm going like, which license would you like to see, sir? <laughs> I got a marriage license here. Is that, is that going to do the job? I don't think so. I got a license. I can drive mobile cars down at the, at the you know, at Disney. So I'm, I'm like, no, he goes, I, I need the license. And I'm like, okay, there you go, yeah. And he goes, sir, I don't know why I'm going to do this. But I just, I'm going to let you go today. <laughs> How many of you know that mercy produces a feeling yeah. that I'm like, as how many of you know when they're taking my license, I'm thinking, oh, no, my insurance is going to go up. And I'm going to have to deal with my wife when I roll up the window. You know what I'm talking about? Honey, I've told you that's going to be points. And I'm just like, I'm, I'm going, okay. <laughs> so when they show me mercy, I roll up the window and I look at her and go, favor of God. <laughs> favor of God. I don't know what to tell you, baby. I'm just favor of God. She's like, yeah, you got some favor on you, sweetheart. You better slow down, you know? And I'm like, oh, thank you very much. Why does God expect me to show mercy? Four reasons. Are you ready? Yeah. <laughs> I did four on this hand and three on that. Did you see that? That's good right there. So you're getting four, you're getting three. Anyhow, I'm fired up about this. Are you ready? Four reasons. Number one, because God continually shows mercy to me. Oh, did you hear me? God continually pays my speeding tickets. He continually takes care of my bill. Ephesians 2, 4 and 5 says, God is so rich in mercy and he loves us so very much that when we were spiritually dead and doomed. How many of you know if you're dead and doomed, that's like really double? <laughs> it's not like I'm dead. It's like I'm dead and doomed. You know what I'm talking about? He says you're dead and doomed. How many of you know lights are out at that point? You know what I'm talking about? Dead and doomed. And by the way, you can be dead and doomed. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Master and Savior, you're not only dead, but you're doomed. People go, well, what sin will send me to hell? None of them. What sends you to hell is the rejection of Jesus Christ as your Lord and Master and Savior and your repentance. Can I get an amen in here? Amen. Yeah. Because of our sins, he gave us new life in Christ. We were spiritually dead and doomed. There's nothing you can do about it. You don't even have any power to change. You can read a self-help book. You can go to a really good seminar. You can, you can hum in your closet. I, I don't care what you do. You're done. You cannot save yourself. Only Jesus Christ can save you. And here's what he says. If God offers that mercy to you, then here's what I expect of you. I expect you to pass that mercy on to someone else. That's the ticket right there. Pass on the undeserved mercy to others. Matthew 18, says, shouldn't you have mercy on others just as I have had mercy on you? How many of you know it's a pretty important thing when Jesus asks you a question like that? When Jesus looks at you and says, shouldn't you have mercy on your spouse? Shouldn't you have mercy on your business partner? Shouldn't you have mercy on the people that have shown you no mercy? Jesus asked the question. Number two, are you ready? God wants me to become more like him. He wants me to become more like him. You will never be more like God than when you're merciful. Because only God can give you the ability and the heart and the power to be merciful. Are you with me? Hosea 6.6 6 says, I don't want your sacrifice. I want you to be merciful. I know a lot of people that come to church and they offer sacrifice. They give in the offering and they even lift their hands and they worship. But they're not merciful. Oh, it's quiet. And God is going, I, I really won't even accept your worship if you're not merciful. Matter of fact, I am fully convinced that showing mercy is a form of worship. 
because it says, I am not God. How many people in your life right now needs you and I to show mercy? I don't want your sacrifice if you're not showing mercy. People that are not merciful, can I be just blunt with you? They scare me. Because pride has so grabbed our hearts, we cannot even see the truth. There are Christian organizations who think their role in life is to go out and judge other Christians. Far be it from me to ever let that enter into my heart. Because whatever judgment I give out, the Bible says that same judgment is coming back on me. And how many of you know paybacks really stink? I don't like them at all. So I want you to do this. The third thing is he said, you must treat everyone justly. I love in the book of Micah 5, 8, uh, these people, I, and you've been here in your life. I know you have. I have many times where I'm like, God, will you just please tell me what you want? Have you ever been there? If you haven't, I pray you do this week. God, just tell me what you want. What do you want me to do? And God says, I want these three things. Are you ready for these three things? They're really, really powerful. He says, I want you to treat people justly. I want you to love mercy, and I want you to walk humbly. Good night, Irene. I did a message to a bunch of men one day on if you really want to be the man God created you to be, love justice, show mercy, and walk in humility. Try it. We should fight for those that can't fight for themselves. Can I tell you, at G5, we are going to absolutely stand in the gap for single mothers. We're going to stand in the gap, and we're going to give them the support that they need. We're going to be there for single dads. We're going to be there for the people that are aging up in life. Right now, I'm asking God for a 1,000 70-year-old plus here. Are you ready? Will you join me right now? Some of you are working to get there. That's going to help out. But here's what I can tell you. I'm just asking God right now. Can I tell you what I'm asking God for right now? I'm asking God that every seat that is being filled right now, I'm asking that you today will pray that somebody that's far away from God would fill your seat. But we're going to build another building. We'll do another service. But how many of you know that if this church is winning people to Jesus Christ, how many of you know that's God's heart? And that's what God wants. And so we're going to do that with all of our hearts. So I just want to encourage you. James 2.13 says you must show mercy to others or God won't show mercy to you when he judges you one day. But the person who shows mercy will stand without fear. That means I'll stand in confidence. God, I showed mercy. God, I fought for justice. God, I stayed humble. I did not allow pride. As I grew in my faith, as I grew in my walk with God, as I grew in my knowledge of God, I never allowed arrogance to fill my heart. See, some of you right now, God's about to bless you and he's about to promote you. I'm prophetically speaking to you right now. And I'm warning you before you get there that one of the greatest challenges of your life will stay humble before God. Because you'll get there and you will think it's you. And you'll be spiritually blind to the fact that you think you're more than what you are. Listen, friends, it's all Jesus. And we need to be humble before his throne. Can I get an amen? The fourth thing is, is because being merciful really relieves depression. Did you know that? Whenever you're judgmental, do you know what it does to you? It causes you to cut relationships when you weigh in. I've had some people in my life really do some very damaging things. And as soon as it happened, I pray for them that God will bless them. And I start dreaming about how I'm going to bless them. The Bible says, bless those that curse you. If you really want to hurt somebody... Give them love and kindness and respect in the midst of them treating you wrong. And I know that's a big order. Only God can help us do that. Proverbs eleven seventeen. Can I give you a powerful scripture? Somebody needs this one right now. Are you ready? Proverbs eleven seventeen. A merciful person helps himself or herself. 
If you want to help yourself, be merciful. But a cruel person hurts themselves. Some of you have some people that are very cruel in your life right now. And I want you to know it may look like they're winning, but they're not winning because they're actually hurting themselves and they don't even know it. Man, I just encourage you. Job 42.10 says, after Job prayed for his friends, the Lord restores Job's health, wealth, and happiness by giving him half as much as before. Be careful. Be careful. Here's my warning label. Be careful how you treat people because God loves people you don't like. And he blesses people that you would never bless. Matter of fact, some of us have got issue right now because we know somebody got a promotion that's not as talented, not as smart, not as wise, not as good. Matter of fact, we're so sick and tired of hearing their name. Jane, Jane, Jane. I'm so sick of Jane's name. Jane, Jane, Jane. Pray for them. Bless them. You're next. It's going to happen. You just don't know when. But how many of you know when you get pulled over and they let you go, it don't matter. You're just Lord, thank you so much. So why should I do it? You have those four ways. How should I do it? Let me tell you this real quick. Are you ready? Can I give you four ways to do it? I want you to be equipped. I want you when you walk out of here going, okay, I know why I should do it, God. I know why your word tells me to do it. I'm going to obey your word over my feelings. Now, how do I do it? Look at your neighbor and say, how? how? Okay, that was pretty good. All right, number one, are you ready? If you're ready, say yes. yes. Forgive people. Forgive people. Boy, that sounds so simple, doesn't it? And it feels really good when people forgive you. But you know, I have friends in my life that I love so much that they cannot say, I'm sorry for nothing. They can't do it. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. <laughs> Here's a big one. Are you ready? Here's a big one. Are you ready? Are you ready? I was wrong, wrong, wrong. I was wrong. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I was wrong. I love you. I need you. I'm proud of you. 2 Corinthians 2 7 says, When people sin, you should forgive and comfort them so they don't give up in despair. Can I ask you a question? Just me and you. I wore my white coat for this talk today. How many of you have somebody in your life right now that you need to remove the judgment off their lives? And let God be God. I want to challenge you to do it. In Luke eleven four, 4, it says, forgive us our sins as, free, as we forgive those who have sinned against us. Amen. Just forgive. Proverbs 28, 13 says, whoever refuses to admit his or her mistakes can never be successful. You need to unline that. But if he confesses and forsakes them, he gets another chance. My daddy, when I was a little boy, he used to walk up to me and he would say, son, whatever you do in your life, don't become a successful failure. Oh, the world may say you're successful, but how many of you know you can't judge success by this world standard? You have to say, God, what is your definition of success? What is it in your life? Show mercy. So forgive. Number two is be patient with people who are different than you. Can I say that a little more straight? Be patient with people who are jerks. Can I say this one more time? Be patient with people who are quirky and awkward. You got any of those people in your life? Yeah, yeah, we all do. <laughs> Would you agree with me that we're all odd in some way? I will never forget I told my kids, I said, kids, what is it like to have a dad that never embarrasses you. And they looked at me like, Daddy, really? Because I, I don't know about you, dads. I'm one of those dads that actually enjoys embarrassing my children. I, I mean, I just think it's a joy. Like, I've never done it. And you men that do this, I'm not judging you. I, I'm praying for mercy over your life. But I, I have had moments where I want to wear sandals with black socks. 
Oh, oh, I really do. I, I, I have moments where I just, I want to go to Disney in my shorts with my black socks and sandals and walk around like I'm cool. I am really cool. You know what I'm talking about? Like, I, I mean, how? We're going to have black socks Sunday some morning, man, here. It's going to be awesome. Uh, I, who's in with me? Who's in with me? All right, good. Two of you. That ain't bad in the crowd this size. Uh, Ephesians 4, 31 and 32 says, don't get bitter or angry. By the way, this is number three. Be an agent of mercy. Be an agent of mercy. Amen. Be a carrier of mercy. You can either be a carrier of mercy or you can be a carrier of judgmentalism. In your home, in your life, it's easy to hold people to a standard that not even you can live to. It's easy to measure people from a distance and you don't know them. It's easy to say things about people who are in the fire of life that I don't have any idea. I'm not close to them. I never had a conversation with them. It's easy for me to cast judgment. And I want to tell you what that is. That is a look into my own soul. It tells me there's something that needs to change in my life. So here's what he says. Be an agent, a person, a person that gives mercy to other people. The Bible says in 1 Peter 2.17, treat everyone you meet with dignity. Treat everyone you meet with dignity. I've prayed from the day we founded this church that we would be the most loving, kind, gentle bunch of warriors on the planet. We're serious about fighting the enemy and loving God's people. Can we do that, church? Can we fill our homes with love and words of kindness? Can we put it in our body language? Have you ever walked up to somebody and they ignore you? Have you ever had that happen? Have you ever walked up to somebody and they act like they don't want to talk to you? My wife and I walk every morning and it's really, really a lot of fun. And we say hi to everybody. And there are days that people, people just put their head down, keep walking. And God forgive me because I need to get saved at another level. I know I do. And so do you. That when I go past them and they don't say hi, I go, really good to see you. And, and that's not good. But how many of you know I'm like, hey, you're not two years old. You're supposed to treat people with dignity and honor and love and kindness and a smile. What happened in society? And this pandemic has not helped anything because it turned everybody into recluses. And now we're so used to being stuck in our little cocoon, it's hard to get out. Can I tell you, I will never forget our first time we were able to come back together with people live and hug each other and high five and do these things. That's your comfort level. I was like, oh God, now I understand why you say in your word, do not forsake yourselves as son, as some do, where you don't assemble together. Amen. One of Satan's greatest lies and enemy, uh, his weapons is isolation in your life. If he can isolate you, he can destroy you. So Ephesians says, don't get bitter or angry or use harsh words that hurt each other. Don't yell. Bitter, angry, harsh words hurt. Don't yell at one another or curse or even make rude. Ever be rude. Instead, be kind and merciful. Can, can I ask, is that like really convicting to you? It's very convicting to me. Anyhow, uh, Luke 6, 35, 36. Can I just give you one more that's going to bother us? Can I just, this is going to bother us. Uh, he says, love your enemies. Do good to them. What? And I agree. It's not right. Mercy is love and action. And when you love your enemies, you're being like Jesus. You're being so like Jesus. Number four, and I close. Can you help somebody that's hurting? Can you help somebody that's hurt you? I'm not saying be a doormat. I'm not saying be abused. I'm not saying stay in an abusive relationship. I'm not saying that at all. But I'm asking you for people that are just mean. Can you love them? Can you show love? Can you show mercy? Proverbs 3.27 says, Wherever or whenever you possibly can, do good to those who are in need. Instead of being judgmental, be merciful. When's the last time 
in your life, you showed mercy to somebody that was not being kind to you. In relationships, we say two things. Don't ever let an issue get greater than the relationship. See, you got to decide if being right is more important than the unity in your home. You got to decide if having it my way is more important than the unity and the honor. The second thing we always say is attack the problem, not the person. Don't attack the person. Once it starts coming out that you're attacking people, you've moved out of the heart of God. You've moved out of the heart of God. Can we as a church just make a decision over the next seven days that we're going to love people and we're going to give them grace and that we're going to give mercy. We're going to give people the benefit of the doubt. Can we do that? How many of y'all like to be given the benefit of the doubt? I, I, every one of us want that. And so I'm just asking you to give it. Titus 3.5 says, Jesus saves us, not because of the good we did, but because of his mercy. James comes after it. He comes after it. Mercy. Mercy trumps judgment. Do you realize none of us would be here this morning if mercy didn't trump judgment? justice. None of us deserve this. You know the breath that's in your lungs right now? Do you know the heartbeat that's in your body? Do you know the strength that's in your legs? Do you know where that came from? Do you know where your gift came from? So I want to challenge you and I want to invite you because Tuesday nights I'm getting ready to start a series on who you are and your shape how God formed you, how God made you, and how God wants to release you. I want to invite you to bring friends because I promise this is going to be so revolutionary for them. The people that were at the meeting last night, and by the way, thank you for those of you that were at the meeting. Thank you for those that serve here in the church. And I want to encourage you to become a part of the serve team. I promise you we won't waste your time. I promise we won't take many days out of your life, but I promise you, if you'll come, you're going to find yourself growing and expanding in a way that you cannot imagine. But I encourage you, Tuesday night, 7 o'clock, let's meet here. We're going to worship. It's always a little crazier on Tuesday nights and a lot of fun. The spirit of freedom is here. And we're going to be equipped probably for the next five to six Tuesdays. I just want to encourage you. Because right now, I have so many people come to me going, Tim, I don't know my gifting. I don't know my calling. We have one thing that when you go through our DNA class where you answer 75 questions that just shows you who you are. You'll begin to understand your spiritual gifts that God has given you. It's going to be life-changing. Well, maybe you're here this morning and you're saying, you know what, Tim? I want to be merciful, but I really struggle with it. And I just want to say this morning, I want two prayers this morning. If you've never asked Jesus to be Lord of your life, I want to give you the chance. I want the privilege to lead you to Jesus. The second thing is for those of you that may be struggling with that, I'm going to ask God to just fill your heart with his love and his peace. If you don't know Jesus, if you know that you need to confess your sins, if you've never asked him to be Lord of your life, if you want to rededicate your life, will you just say this prayer after me right now? Matter of fact, we could all say it. Are you ready? Let's do it together as a family. Dear Jesus, I'm lost without you. I want to give you my life. I confess I'm a sinner. Thank you for your forgiveness. Save me and cleanse me. I'm going to live for you. I give you my life in Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, you're now a Christian, and I'm so excited. Welcome to the kingdom of God. Could you stand to your feet right now with me? Is everybody all right this morning? You okay with this mercy? You okay with it? How many of you are going to commit? I'm going to show mercy this week. I'm going to do it. All right, good. Well, let me just pray for you. Father, I thank you that your anointing is on every life. And I just pray, Lord, that your strength would fill every heart. 
And God, that the joy of God would just fill us to overflowing, that your grace and your mercy and what you put in us would be greater than anything that we are facing. God, it's all you. So I pray right now for those that are hurting, Lord, for those that have been hurt by people, those that are right now just really struggling with forgiveness, those that are really struggling with the pain that somebody close to them inflicted on their lives. Lord, I pray right now that your spirit, as we open our hearts, fill us, give us strength, heal us, replace that pain with your love and your grace and your strength. We give you the glory and the honor and the praise in Jesus' name. If you receive that, say amen. Amen. Let's sing. Sing holy. down on mercy I know that uh, we're gonna start requiring steel-toed shoes here at G5 I don't know how he does it week in and week out but it's amazing PT thank you for that amazing word we are not done we're excited we have some more exciting things going on after this but um, just wanted to share with you the if you, if this is your first time there's a connect table out there and uh, there's a few things that we would just ask that you can stay connected here at G5. If you could fill out a Connect card, uh, this is a way for us just to just to get you into our system. But um, we're not we don't have enough time to bother you, okay? So uh, if you're worried about us texting you and calling you and reaching out all the time, that's not what happens. But this is just something that it's in our database. And again, you know, there's a lot of times when if you're new or you're, you're you tell your family, hey, I went to this cool church, they may reach out to us. And, and this is just a way that we can stay connected to you. Uh, there's emails and blasts and things that can go out. You can go to g5church.com and get all that stuff. But we just encourage you to do this, get connected, um, and then we can have you in our system. The other thing is, is if you made a decision today, we want to celebrate that decision. Um, if you decided that, yeah, if you made, it gave your life to the Lord today and said, hey, man, I'm going to follow you um, and prayed that prayer, we would encourage you to fill out this decision card. Uh, we do baptisms as well out in front of the cross. Uh, we, we are on a ranch, so we do that in a horse trough. And it's amazing. We're going to be doing that again, I believe, here this in July. We're going to do it in July. 
Uh, the water's been cold the last few times. We're going to push it in and I'm just teasing you. So, um, but we'll do that. So if you want to fill that out and check that you want to be baptized, and it'll give us a chance to, um, you know, connect with you on that. And then if you made that decision today, PT's also written a book. It's called Your New Life. That's at the Connect table out there. And we just encourage you to pick that up. Uh, we we want to walk with you in that journey. Uh, I, I encourage you to share that with a few people here as well. Just let them know, hey, man, I made a decision today. And and uh, grab that book. It's Again, it's free. And uh, anything free is worth saving up for. But it's there's so much information. There's so much power in making that decision in your life. And we just want you to know that um, to have people around you that can walk with you in that, it's going to be very important. So your new life, that's what the book looks like. If you're online, you can go ahead and download that as well. Uh, there's ways to do that. Go to G5 Church and you can download a PDF file of this book. And then uh, outside of that, we are getting ready to go out and eat some food because G5 likes to... I'm so sorry. Blake. Blake's in the middle of his thing. Sure. Can we do that? I feel so bad. You know, Blake, is, you are so good at this. Let's do this again. G5 likes to do what? See, they stepped up their game for you on that one. So that's my fault. Blake, I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you. So anyways, but uh, just a few announcements on food. Um, for those of you that are new, if you're new and this is your first time, just please join us for that. Um, G5 doesn't provide the food. G5ers provide the food. So in the future, if this is something, you know, you want to participate, we would love for you to, to bring some public chicken or some pizza, gluten-free pizza for PT. And, uh, but anyways, you can bring whatever you want. You got a favorite dish, you want to bring it. Um, this is just something that we always do every Tuesday, every Sunday. We just encourage you to uh, stick around in fellowship with us. And um, as, as we always say, we're not the Golden Corral. So uh, we want to be good stewards of what God has given us. Uh, cups, plates, forks, etc. all that stuff, just... Put your name on your cups and you don't have to take a, a, a new plate every single time. Um, if you're brand new, we want to honor you. We want to give you an opportunity to get in the line first. Uh, thank you for honoring our servant leaders. These ladies, they, they pour their hearts out into this. They're here early in the morning. They're warming all this food up. G5 is investing in warmers. We're honestly, we're getting ready to invest in more stove or, or more ovens to, to heat this stuff up so that it's warm. Um, because as we grow, this is something we want to continue to do. So when you give, just know that this is all these all these things behind the scenes that people don't even realize that money is being poured into these things so that we can create this culture and environment that when you come, you get this feeling, okay? So we just thank you for honoring that culture um, of, of honor, <laughs> um, basically, and saying thank you and please and, and uh, leading your children through that as well because uh, it's more caught than it is taught. So they're going to watch you and they're going to watch what you do and how you interact with with the servant leaders out there. So we just we just thank you for that. So I'm going to pray over the food and then we're going to go ahead and be released and go out there and enjoy some time together. So dear Jesus, we just thank you for this day, Father. Jesus, we thank you for each seat that's in this building that's full. But Father, we know that these seats are going to be filled with people that are hungry for you, new people, Jesus. And Father, we just thank you for that. We thank you for every person here today. Father, we know that everyone is going through something. We're dealing with things. And Father, we know that you show us mercy and you show us grace. And we just thank you for this day, Jesus. We thank you for your example, Father. God, we thank you that, that our words are uplifting and kind and loving towards one another, Jesus. Father, we just give you, give you our day. We give you our week. We give you our life, Jesus. We lay down for you, Father. We just thank you for the food that's been prepared. We thank you for the hands that have blessed it that have prepared it, Jesus. Father, we just give you this day. Protect us. We love you. In your name we pray. Amen. We'll see you Tuesday.